Our Mass today is in honor of the Holy Trinity, the most basic mystery of our Catholic faith. The word Trinity was coined in the third century to express our belief that there are three persons in one God, Trinity, three in one, Latin, tres plus unus. The Holy Trinity was not explicitly revealed in the Old Testament. Our Lord revealed it in the New Testament when he spoke about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It is a matter of both oneness and threeness in God. According to our Catholic faith, God is one in nature. There's only one God, but there are three persons, all sharing the same divinity. In his preaching, St. Patrick in Ireland used a shamrock to illustrate this truth, one leaf with three protrusions. We possess faith in the Trinity when we make the sign of the cross, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We are baptized in the name of the same three persons, and it is used often in the liturgy of the Catholic Church. God is therefore both one and three, but not in the same respect. There's only one God, one essence, one substance, one nature. God is absolutely simple, having no parts. He is uncreated, eternal and infinite in power, but at the same time, there's a threeness in God, namely the three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They're not just three different names for the same reality, like my father, who is also called Randall, and Dad. They are three distinct persons, but not separate, because they are one in nature. The first person of the Trinity is God the Father, who is the source of all reality. He is the originator of all, the creator of heaven and earth. Our Lord often prays to and refers to God the Father. He prays to Him as our Father. The reason for this is that our Lord is the natural Son of the Father, while we are adopted children. As such, we are also brothers of the Son and temples of the Holy Ghost. The Son and the Holy Ghost are distinct persons and divine equal in majesty to the Father. The Son is the Word with God. He was sent to the world to teach us the truth about God and the world. The distinctness and equality of the persons is revealed by our Lord in the baptismal formula at the end of Matthew's Gospel. Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is distinct from the Father and the Son, and is also God. He was sent into the world by the Father and the Son to make us holy. In the Creed, we say that He is the Lord and the giver of life. So there are three divine persons in God, but only one God. And God is absolutely simple, meaning there is no composition in God. That is part of the mystery. In God, there is one intellect and one will, and the three persons all share in the same divine nature through which they create and operate. Thus, where the Father is and acts, so do to the Son and the Holy Ghost. Catholic theology explains the three persons as three substantial relations. These three relations in God are the Father as the originator and generator. The Son is generated by the Father and also called the Word or image of God. The Holy Ghost is spirited or breathed forth by the Father and the Son. He is the gift of love. There is no priority of time between the three persons, since they are all eternal. Each of the three persons is in the others. There is total mutual permanence. Thus our Lord said, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. All activities of God outside of the inner life of God, like creation, are common to the three persons. But we attribute creation to the Father, redemption to the Son, and sanctification to the Holy Ghost. It is important to make a distinction between the Trinity in itself, in its inner life, and its external works of creation and sanctification. My relationship to the Trinity and my love of the Trinity are more important than theological knowledge about it. Some basic knowledge, though, is necessary, but love is always more important. Prayer and works of charity lead a person to the experience of the Trinity. 
that is, living the Christian faith and praying to all three persons. Our blessed Lord said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my commandments, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Here our Savior reveals to us the mystery of the divine indwelling in the soul of the believer. So we possess the blessed Trinity within us when we are in the state of sanctifying grace. The Holy Trinity is an absolute mystery. It is the mystery of mysteries, which we will never comprehend. It is the most basic mystery of our Catholic faith. A mystery is something hidden, veiled, unknown, and perhaps unknowable. We accept it in faith because our Lord revealed it and His infallible Church teaches it. We read in Hebrews that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. The mystery of the Trinity is beyond reason, but not contrary to reason. The author of The Cloud of Unknowing put it this way, By love, God may be caught and held, by thinking, never. Let us strive there to love and serve the Holy Trinity, in whose name we were baptized and made a Christian, as we try to return love for love. Today we should pray, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost to the God who is, who was, and is to come. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Amen.